The Lunar New Year Festival. The hat was hideous, one of those gaudy Chinese emperor ones you find in the Asian souvenir stores at Epcot. It was bowl shaped and stitched together with cheap red fabric. The signature braid of twisted black yarn spilled from its flat, spilled from its back like a makeshift prank. Mandy wondered if her younger cousin, Kevin, had any idea how ridiculous it looked as he fitted himself with the accessory in front of his bathroom mirror. Aunt Wee gave me this for me when she was in Vietnam a few weeks ago. It's the only authentic thing I, have, I own from there, he said. Kevin had a larger head than most children, particularly on the left side, which jutted out like a bubble was forming from inside his skull. It was the kind of noticeable feature that caused you to double take after passing him by on the streets. What do you think? Cool, isn't it? He asked. It definitely stands out, Mandy tried to say in a convincing manner. Do you really want to bring that outside, though? How else are people going to know I'm Vietnamese? I want them to see exactly how I am for the festival. And you're positive that's the only thing you want to do today? No mall, no movies, no park? Kevin shook his head as he kept staring into the mirror. The braid flopped behind him like the severed tail of a blizzard that still had some bite left in it. It was only an hour ago that Mandy found out she had to babysit her cousin. Aunt Kang had called in the morning begging Mandy to help her, begging Mandy to help out because she had to pick up another shift at the hospital. Though reluctant, Mandy had accepted only after being promised a shopping spree at J.C. Penney. The catch was that she'd have to take Kevin to the awful Lunar New Year festival put on by the local Vietnamese community. Mandy followed Kevin out of the house. As they both got into the car, Mandy glanced at me, Kevin in the back seat, unsure of what to talk about with him. She had, never, she had never spent any real time with her cousin during their family parties besides exchanging that shallow greetings. She knew that his only distinguishable trait besides being ugly was his endless knowledge of Vietnam. All he'd ever talked about were random facts about the country, such as the correct way to pronounce Tran, which was actually Jun, or the daily dong exchange between the United States and Vietnam. It was a mystery as to why he cared so much about the racial half men had always wanted to abandon. How old are you now, Kevin? Mandy asked as she backed her car out of the driveway. Ten. I just turned ten 26 days ago. How'd you celebrate it? With a Vietnamese zodiac themed party. Everyone got to figure out what their zodiac sign was and what their future meant. I gave them animal masks and animal crackers in the goodie bags. A zodiac themed party? Mandy had a hard time picturing what that would have looked like. She couldn't imagine how her aunt or redneck uncle would have felt decorating something so bizarre and awful. Isn't that what I said? Most of my friends couldn't make it though, so I took all the charts to my teacher the next Monday so we could figure everything out, figure everything out at school. Mandy didn't have the heart to ask how many guests canceled. Sounds like it could have been fun. Wish I could have seen it. The entire family was invited, but your mom said not to bother you since you're still failing out of college. <laughs> she kept her teeth shut for a few seconds until deciding to maintain the peace in the car. Ten's such a big age. What'd you get for your birthday? All I wanted was to go to the Lunar New Year Festival. It's the year of the sheep now, so it's supposed to be a calmer year. Mandy stared at Kevin in the rearview mirror, not used to this kind of blind devotion over something so trivial. She could feel the disbelief creep into her composure, pulling her face down into a heavy scowl. You know, when I was ten, I wanted so many things like clothes, toys, new sports equipment. The only thing I wanted was to go to the Lunar New Year Festival, Mandy. There's nothing more authentic than celebrating with the Vietnamese community. It'll be my first time. The more Mandy stared at Kevin in the mirror, the more she realized just how ugly he really was. <laughs> On top of his misshapen head, his half lidded eyes seemed to place half an inch too far apart. The way he sat, with one leg tucked beneath his body and the other dangling from the seat, drew attention to his protruding belly and indicated the spoon-fed privileged life he must have enjoyed. While he sat still and patient and staring out the window, Mandy recognized the subtle intensity beneath the stoicism that made her uncomfortable. It was ominous. It was as if his apathetic as if it was as if he was apathetic to her frustration and struggle, concerned only with some kind of fantasy he sought for himself. Done. <laughs>